What's going on, guys? Welcome back to WWE Network and Show, where I, Graham Jesus and Matthews, break down all the original content they watch on the WWE Network. And today we're talking the latest episode of Talking Smack for March 13, 2021. Um, this was a pretty good episode, and as always, the show closing conversation with Paul Heyman and really whoever he interacts with was once again must say. This week it was with Biggie, but we'll get to that momentarily. Uh, to open the episode, we find out a couple of things. Two things we already knew. One thing is now confirmed. That being Biggie versus Apollo Crews is now official for the Fastlane pay per view next weekend, and it will be contested for Biggie's Intercontinental Championship. Uh, Biggie threw the challenge out there on SmackDown. Apollo did not accept until it was accepted on a WWE.com exclusive video right after the show, so we now know that's happening at the pay per view. We also know that next week on SmackDown, and this was announced during the show itself, that Sasha Banks will defend the SmackDown Women's Championship against Nia Jax next week on the show. Why? Well, fuck you, that's why, apparently, to WWE's logic. Um, in the other match, Edge will be on SmackDown in the ring for the very first time, and he said 11 years, but I said this in my SmackDown audio review yesterday, I'm pretty sure it's only 10. Um, he wrestled a singles match on SmackDown in 2011, right before he retired, uh, one against... Brodus Clay, another against Drew McIntyre, a few against Drew McIntyre actually, so um, the first time in 10 years, but he will be in action next week against Jey Uso with the winner becoming the special, against, uh, the special guest enforcer for the Daniel Bryan Roman Reigns Universal Championship match at the Fastlane pay-per-view next weekend. Before they even welcome on their first guest, Paul Heyman just goes on a mini rant about Roman Reigns being pissed at Edge for what he's done and how the real conspiracy, and Sami Zayn can complain all he wants, the real conspiracy is against Roman Reigns and how Edge might be now the special guest ring enforcer for the um, Universal Championship match at the pay-per-view when everyone's out to get Daniel, or everyone's out to get Roman Reigns, blah, blah, blah. He even says, he even acknowledges Christian running away to escape Roman Reigns. As soon as he found out, or as soon as he figured out that Roman would probably be coming to Edge's best friend um, as a tactic to get inside Edge's head, he ran away. And he doesn't say Christian by name, but he does say right after he says that, he says, the sooner these Christians convert, obviously referencing Christian, uh, the better off everyone will be. And I thought that was an amazing line. Obviously, they're not going to say any about anything about that on WWE TV itself. But the fact that Heyman was able to slip that in there on Talking Smack, I thought that was really cool. So, Sami Zayn takes exception to what Paul Heyman said and gets very upset. He said he was in a good mood up until he heard Heyman say that the Sami Zayn conspiracy is crap and that the real conspiracy is against Roman Reigns. And Sami is very upset about this because how many world championships has Roman Reigns won? How many WrestleManias has he main evented? How can there be a conspiracy against the guy who is the current face of the company. And that's a great point. Sami Zayn brings up a great point. He promises many times here that his documentary is coming out soon, and that a teaser for said documentary is coming out soon. But Heyman proved him right. He said that Heyman proved him right, and he's very grateful to him for that, um, and that you know he has shown that the conspiracy is against Sami Zayn himself, and that people aren't taking it seriously, which is why he is correct and that the conspiracy is true, and that, again, the documentary is coming out soon, blah, blah, blah. This was a grade A meltdown from Sami Zayn on Talking Smack. This was awesome. And then as soon as he walks away, <laughs> Paul Heyman once again goes back to burying him after comparing himself to Abe Lincoln, by the way. He says, yeah, I'm honest, Paul Heyman. And it was just funny the way that he said it. And he goes, yeah, not even Abe Lincoln. Abe Lincoln set a lot of people free, but he wants to free Sami Zayn. And as soon as Sami Zayn walks off, Heyman just goes right back to burying the guy and goes, hey, when I was in charge of Raw, I wanted to put you know Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn together as a tag team to put up against the Street Profits. And I'm not even sure when this would be. This doesn't make any sense. Because Kevin Owens was on Raw when Heyman was there, but Sami Zayn was always on SmackDown. So unless there, And he said to put up against the Street Profits specifically. So I'm not even really sure what he's talking about. Uh, <laughs> so anyway, he said that Owens wanted nothing to do with Sami Zayn because he thought he was a prick. So I thought that was great. Uh, Nia Jax comes on with Shayna Baszler and Reginald. Who fucking cares? The Reginald shit has long overstayed its welcome, and it, it ran its course many, many months ago. So she compliments Reginald and, and calls him the most handsome man in the entire company, and you know she wants all the gold, and she complains about not having a chair, which is a legitimate gripe to have here on Talking Smack, that Shayna has a chair but no one else. 
but she wants to defend two titles at WrestleMania. She doesn't know if Kayla doesn't know this, and Kayla, you work here, so why wouldn't you, she says. But there are two nights of WrestleMania this year, a lot like last year, and she says that she can defend the SmackDown Women's Championship on one night and defend the WWE Women's Tag Team titles on the other. And Shane is pissed about everything. She was pissed about having to go shopping with Reginald and Nia. She's pissed about what happened on SmackDown. She's pissed off about everything. And she says, well, I could just defend these championships by myself. And Nia says, why would you do that? And Shayna says, well, you're going for the SmackDown Women's Championship by yourself. You're not involving me in that decision. And Nia says, whoa, 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 whoa. I'll take the SmackDown Women's Championship. You can go up for the Raw Women's Championship. And Shayna gets really excited about that. And she and Heyman kind of smile at each other before they walk off, which was a little weird. So I hope to God we're not getting that. And I love Sheena. I would love to see Sheena as Raw Women's Champion, but I do not need another Sasha and Bayley from last year when they were the Tag Team Champs, the Raw Women's Champ, and the SmackDown Women's Champ. That was decent enough. That was enjoyable because they're both great. Sheena, I like. Nia is not as is not as good. Not nearly as good. Let's just put it that way. So uh, <laughs> anyway, they tease that they walk off. The last guest they have on, as I mentioned earlier, was the Intercontinental Champion Big E, who returned to SmackDown this week for the first time in a few weeks. The very first thing he asks Paul Heyman upon coming on the show, was this what you wanted? And Heyman says, it's not what I wanted, but I gave you a spoiler for what life was going to be like when you were Intercontinental Champion. You can relate to Roman Reigns. Everyone is coming for you. Everyone wants to be the big star on the rise. Everyone wants to be champion. This is what you're going to have to expect. Apollo Crews is not the first, and he won't be the last person to be coming for that championship. you got to be ready. you got to be ready, and I'm glad you're getting aggressive and whatever. And he's like, listen, we still have a spot open in our faction for you. You know, we can always have, we have another Uso, we need another person in the group, and if you're interested, let me know. Because they have Jay Uso, and he says, listen, we took Jay Uso in, we made him this main event level star, which, he's not a main eventer, but, you know, he's had some really, really good matches and even beaten people like AJ Styles and Kevin Owens and Daniel Bryan, among other people. He's had matches with uh, Drew McIntyre and Shinsuke Nakamura, and now Edge next week. So he says, listen, if you want a spot in their stable, just let me know. And Mickey doesn't say no, but he's like, oh, that's interesting, blah, blah, blah. But I will promise you this, Paul, and I thought this was amazing. He says, I promise you this. Come fast lane, I will beat, I will destroy, I will decimate Apollo Crews. I will retain my Intercontinental Championship. I will go on to WrestleMania, retain it again. I will hold this Intercontinental Championship for an entire calendar year. And come 2022... When I am still Intercontinental Champion, and if Roman Reigns is still Universal Champion, really just the Universal Championship in general, but specifically if Roman is holding it, I am coming for that championship at WrestleMania, Big E says. And I will be a double champion coming out of WrestleMania 38. It'll be, you know, it'll be um, Big E, the Intercontinental, and Universal Champion, which I thought was really fucking cool. And then he just kind of walks off, and Heyman smiles again, gives off that creepy smile, and he you know, starts smacking his hands and clapping as the show goes off the air. He was really happy for whatever reason. I don't know why, but this was fucking great. I, honestly, at this point, I, I was saying Big E and Roman at SummerSlam, and maybe they, they, they can't wait that long, th this long, but maybe do it at WrestleMania instead. Maybe do it at WrestleMania 38 instead of SummerSlam, and you can use this as when they started planting the seeds. They've been planting the seeds for this plant, that is Roman Reigns versus Big E for quite some time. I would say, hey, hold off until WrestleMania next year if you can. Have Big E win the Rumble, do that. I think that would be fucking cool. I don't know if Roman will still be doing this great character by then. I don't know if Big E will be as relevant by then. I hope so. But I thought this was amazing. The overall, <coughs> excuse me, the overall episode was actually really, really good. Heyman's mini rant was great. Big E and Heyman was awesome. Uh, Sami Zayn's meltdown was fantastic. And even Nia and Shayna, who I don't really care for on these talk shows, specifically on Raw Talk, they're just terrible. And I like Shayna, but like just her her dynamic with specifically our truth is just annoying. Like it was funny at first, now it's just annoying. At least on Talking Smack, they stay on track. Uh, no rhyme intended there. And they get their points across, and it's really, really good. Nia here was fine. They they tease some stuff. They set the stage for next week's SmackDown Women's Championship match, which 
Shouldn't be happening, but that's for another video, which I actually talked about in yesterday's video, my SmackDown audio review, so check that out if you haven't already. Um, but yeah, overall, I thought this was a great piece of business. Another really, really good episode of Talking Smack this week. So check it out right now on the WWE Network, the March 13th, 2021 edition of Talking Smack. Be sure to like this video, drop a comment, share the video, and subscribe to the channel for more daily content. Hit the bell button as well to be notified every time a new video goes up. We've had daily content going up every single fucking day for well over a year now. In, in the last couple of days alone, we've had interviews with uh, Adam Cole, ODB, Audio reviews of Talking Smack, Raw Talk, SmackDown itself, um, WrestleRant radio excerpts, Q&A videos, a WandaVision um, Season 1 recap slash Falcon and the Winter Soldier preview uh, video. Either that's going up. If that's not up already, it will be up soon here on the channel. And then also tomorrow, we have the Howard the Duck review going up with myself, Phil, um, Chris, and, and a few other people. So that's going to be a lot of fun as well. So if you're not already subscribed here to the channel, please do so. Never miss a video. We're on the road to 6k so the closer we get to it the uh, I, I would very much appreciate it so uh, thank you guys as always have a great rest of your week slash weekend i'm graham gsm matthews and i'll catch your ass down the road